Welcome everyone to yet another episode of the Pop Tapestry. Today we have with us um, a star in the music world. His name is Sean. He is a multi-genre singer from Florida. Please join me in welcoming a truly remarkable talent, Sean. Let's hear what he has to say in this episode of the Pop Tapestry. How are you doing today, Sean? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing perfect. I'm super excited to start this conversation. So, can you just walk us through your earliest musical memory and how has it influenced your journey? Well, we got to go back to when I was four years old. So that, oh, I think that, that long. That's <laughs> my first uh, journey on this wonderful, uh, uh, to quote Jason Mraz, the mystical, magical, rhythmical, radical ride that we call life. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> so it started when I was four years old. It was, this was at my parents' house. I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. So oh, okay. we lived right by Cleveland Hopkins International Airport, and I have these vivid memories of those airplanes just going by, and it's just like, oh gosh, it, it was it was kind of nice to be out of a, a, a airplane flying area and all that because it was very noisy. But I digress. Anyways, going <laughs> forward with that, uh, it was Christmas, uh, 1986. That just shows how old I am, and uh, Bill Collins is uh, uh, throwing it all away. But Genesis was playing on the radio. And at the time, I was kind of just like babbling into it, you know, I, 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 you know, I wasn't really singing per se, but it was my first experience in music. And mm -hmm. as I got older, I went into, you know, just kind of, the, the, I got involved with the show choirs and the concert choirs and, and, and you know, segwaying into, into school with, with it. And, uh, you know, it kind of really just took off from there. I mean, I was, I was, again, I was active with all the show choirs and concert choirs and got active in musical theater when I was in high school and, and, and I knew, from there, it was like, this was a, definitely a part of me. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to just move forward with that. And, you know, here I am, you know, all these years later, I'm going full time and, uh, and Crid's, you know, like I said, like you mentioned, a monthly genre artist that's, that's pretty much everything. You know, I've done acapella, I've done country with the, what was I thinking, my country cover single. And then I have an original song that I'm going to be releasing as well uh, called Focused. And basically it's just about the journey. You know, basically, no matter what crap gets thrown at your life, you just gotta keep moving forward, and that's the message of that particular song. So it's a lot of a lot of stuff that's uh, coming 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 your way. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I think you've been doing music for a long time now. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I've been a very long time. How many years has it been? For me? Whoa, twenty plus. <laughs> oh, twenty plus. Yeah, that's gotta, really cool. Yeah, you guys, <laughs> yeah, it's, we're we're we're. Uh, Actually, now that I think of it, yeah, it's actually close to 30 plus. It's hard to imagine that, but yeah. No, I, I, I got, like I said, I got really involved with it uh, more into middle school and high school. So, you know, that's when I really knew that that was going to be, uh, you know, what I wanted to do for a living and, and just, you know, move forward with it. So, yeah, it's, it was a passion of mine. And to quote a very uh, good friend of mine, it's actually the director of the Pitch Perfect movies, uh, Deke Sharon, you don't choose music. It chooses you. And I knew right from the get go <laughs> that I knew that this was what I wanted to do and, and, and I live and breathe it and it's what I do. Perfect. That's a lovely answer. I see so much energy in you and so much passion about music. Yeah. That's oh, really yeah. I'm, cool. I'm high energy. I'm all, I'm all the way, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what was your uh, biggest musical influence uh, growing up and how does that inspire your style right now? Yeah, so there's a lot of musical influences. So really good questions because I get asked this a lot. So like, who are your biggest influences? What really make who you are? And for me, being multi-genre, there's a lot. So like in the rock category, like the heavy metal category, by far James Hetfield, Metallica. I mean, it's just when I first heard Metallica in the, in, in the '90s, and, and when I got kind of like you know exposed to what he did, it was like, yeah, it's like you know, like because I, I have you know. I, I love it, putting a little edge to, to, to my rock and everything. So definitely James Hetfield is one of my biggest things. You know, he just add, just adds that intensity that I love. And then like on the pop side of things, uh, currently today I would say Charlie Puth and Jason Mraz. Uh, Jason, because he just has so much lyrical, you know, so much variety lyrically what he does. And he's probably, in my opinion, one of the best songwriters out there because all this stuff is like lips to the teeth, the tip of the tongue with singing and I haven't actually learned one of his new songs, the I Feel Like Dancing. And it's like, I mean, it's like, it's taken me like a while just to get it under my belt because it's just so lyrically intensive. And, yeah. then, so, and then like Charlie Puth, like 
him and I actually share a, a, a gift that's it's actually one in 10,000 people have, and it's, that's absolutely the perfect pitch. So, like, you know, I can identify songs basically out of thin air or pitches out of thin air. You know, so, and, and the biggest thing, like, because I, I hold membership with the Barbershop Harmony Society, someone would come over to me and it's like, you know, hey, how many a B flat? And I'll go, mm, you know, it's all give them a B flat. And it's like, you know, it's, 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 it's almost like they, they're, it's not jealousy. It's just like, it's like I drive people nuts sometimes because I know exactly what key songs are in and mm. just you know, being able to compose with that. And that's actually how Charlie Puth does with his music. He takes everything yeah. and like hears it in his head. So like when I did my original, uh, doing my original song, uh, I actually just was, I think I was just like in the shower, just kind of going, I don't want to spoil it or anything like that, but I'm humming the melody and it's like, you know, okay, this sounds pretty good. This is something I could work with. I'm literally just composing everything in my head. And that's how I usually move forward with my songwriting process. And that's kind of like a, uh, kind of a, another weird question is, you know, yeah, you can, you can take, I take that and just put it into anything that I write. And it's just almost kind of like, I hear it's like a symphony in my head. I guess that's the best way you want uh, to describe it. So it's like, I just have a continual symphony in my head right now. I'm like, yeah, that's how I want it to sound. Yeah. I want to put that there. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of complex thoughts I have in my head. <laughs> Charlie Puth's songs are amazing. The way he makes music is like super amazing because he takes like s- such weird things and like he turns them to music. I got a kick out of those reels when I was watching them because I almost did something similar with, in my content. I was like, what if there was a song that sounded like this? And then I just, you know, kind of put everything together. And I did that actually with a, with uh, an acapella uh, track recording that I did, it kind of like just for fun. It was it was some viral song on TikTok. Uh, if I were a fish, if I were a fish, and it caught me, a sailor. you may have seen it maybe on TikTok, but it was one of those uh, songs that was kind of like it's, it's a cheesy song, and I just kind of just went kind of silly with it and said, okay, like so I got commissioned to do this song if I were a fish, and, and by by the Harmony Town Chorus. So shout outs to the Harmony Town guys there because I commissioned it for for them. But uh, the Harmony Town Chorus in, in Michigan uh, commissioned me. To do that song it was like some TikTok viral thing, and like I just went with it, and just you know, just went with it, and you know, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. What has been your biggest challenge growing up? What has been your biggest challenge in your musical journey, and how did you overcome it? Well, I would say I haven't had, haven't had really major musical challenges. Uh, I would say probably that's a tough question. I've had maybe I think probably the biggest thing is like like you know maybe just like maybe a brain fart you know trying to figure like writing a song maybe um you know like with certain stages maybe uh, I guess you know like one time I slipped on stage so that was kind of like, <laughs> listening to myself so that was uh, as, as far as like actual challenges maybe like in, in writing perhaps but nothing really major uh, I think kind of everything like that I've done so far in life has kind of come a little bit naturally. Uh, you know, I mean, I think the biggest thing is like everybody hates to be rejected. And the truth of the matter is you're going to get rejected in some way, shape or form. You know, be it like if uh, somebody uh, doesn't like your music or doesn't doesn't like you or doesn't like the way you sing a, a certain line or, or basically, you know, like how you're, uh, you know, uh, with the music just getting out there, uh, I think, you know, I think... For people, it's different. You know, I think, I think that's probably one of the biggest things as far as challenge is concerned. Like, you know, is your are you getting the music out there to the right audience, and is it, you know, convincingly out there? So, so I don't. That's pretty much it. I mean, there's really not much challenge. <laughs> challenge. When it comes to songwriting and producing a song. Do you think the song should be made for you to listen first or do you think it should be targeted at an audience and then you should make a song or just make it so that you are able to listen to that song on repeat? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's that's one of the biggest things is, is and, and actually we kind of get to back to tr- what Charlie Puth was, was saying. I was, watch- I was watching a YouTube video of kind of how he produces song and it said, you know, you, you got you got to like it, and, and you know people are going to hear it forever. So you got to get the music right, and that's that's another one of my big mantras is getting the music right. And luckily, I know somebody uh, that's that's uh, that knows with my producer, uh, Michael Walker, uh, Jimmy Orlando, uh, uh, Rick Barker, who actually worked with Taylor Swift. He was the former manager of Taylor Swift. 
and he made a very good point of getting the music right. You know, if you don't like it, if you don't like it, chances are your audience is going to like it. So for me, I'm kind of a natural perfectionist, so that's really tough for me. So as far as like a challenge, for me being kind of a natural perfectionist, getting the music right for me is a big thing. So like I could be spending hours like I can here in my studio just getting a vocal take just right. So like, you know, if I'm saying, huh, or maybe I didn't like that, but huh, you know, like something, it's like a, maybe, a, maybe a caring phrase that I liked a little better than what I did previously. So mm -hmm. it's getting the music right is the biggest thing. And like I said, you're not going to please everybody, but if, like the biggest thing is if you don't like it personally, you're hearing it as like, mm, you know, like I can do that a little better, your audience probably will connect with it. That, I think that's one of the biggest things. I agree to that. Can you share a moment in your career when you realize that music is what you wanted to do professionally? Yeah, I mean, getting, getting back to when I was four and, and just kind of getting the, the, evol you know, the evolution, if you will. Uh, I think when I knew it was what I wanted to do was more high school, but more school back to middle school. Uh, I had my first solo, <laughs> solo audition, and it was all for once, I swear. You know, John Michael Winter did the same song too. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm singing just kind of like maybe a four bar phrase of it. And, you know, keep in mind, this is my first solo, my first ever solo. You know, I was what, 12, 13 years old at the time. My knees are just, oh, they're knocking and everything like that. I was so nervous. I, I you wouldn't believe, like, I, like I'm literally my hands, my hands were shaking, my knees were shaking, and vocally I was probably, oh, you know, it's a kind of feeling. But it's it was a good introduction to what a performer should feel like. Like some performers take beta blockers to calm nerves and everything like that. I like raw nerves because that really tests you to give your best out there on stage. And for me, that was one of the biggest things, like, you know, getting that solo really propelled me into high school and doing the musical theater, which is kind of like, you know, the focus is on you if you're playing a role. You know, it's, you don't have a, a choir or anything like that to back you up or whatever, whatnot. The focus is on you. And I think that's really important, you know, like musical theater, even though I don't do musical theater anymore. I support the arts 100%, but I just, it was not, it's not my avenue. It's not who I am as an independent artist. For me, music is my, is my breathe, is, is, is breathe, is what I breathe. You know, I'm not an actor. I'm not the next Harrison Ford or anything like that. But, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where I, t I took that to heart and it grew me from there. And I went even further <laughs> into the Cleveland Orchestra Youth Chorus and perform with with, with kind of you know it, it, uh, there's a uh, there's a big uh, hall Severance Hall in Cleveland and I had a chance to perform there and it was a really great experience and also in college I had a chance to perform for Kenny Rogers country music legend you know God rest his soul he's no longer with us but you know for for, for to meet Kenny uh, you know in the flesh and and he is he was just as mild mannered and calm and relaxed and everything that you would you would expect him from and really really super nice guy and, and uh mm -hmm. you know it's a shame he's no longer with us but he was very 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 cool to to meet and you know he said you know thank you very much for coming to the to our thing there and working with us and you know it's it's a really really just a blessing to to, to have met him yeah that's really cool we <laughs> want thank more you. people coming to podcast who can say such <laughs> stories <laughs> Yeah, so I appreciate it. Thank, thank you for having me. Can you share an experience from your performances that was memorable or like defining for you? Yeah, I mean, getting back to Kenny Rogers, I think, was, was a very big defining moment. Uh, recently, this was just like last year, uh, I had the privilege of winning the inaugural Hogan's Hangout Men's mm -hmm. Karaoke Championship and meet pro wrestling legend Hulk Hogan in, 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 in person as well. So that, that was really cool for him to present me the belt and, and, and say, you know, here you go, brother, you know, like, what you going to do, you know, it's typical Hulk Hogan. But, uh, you know, I went in that contest with no expectations. And that's one of the biggest things is you can't, you, you have to go in things with no expectation. You've got to go and just give it 100%, you know, no matter what people think or what or whatever, you know, whatever the outcome is, is the outcome. You can't control that. And I've been in many contests in, in like with the Barbershop Army Society in the youth contest where I've, I've won... I've won two district championships, regional championships with the organization, and then I placed second. <laughs> yeah, second. Well, four times I won, four times I won, but second 
I, I, I won twice with uh, one quartet and then fourth and fifth place in the same contest. So uh -huh. it's, not, it's not a given thing. That's one of the biggest things. It's like, you know, you can't go into there expecting to take it all. You don't know. You really don't know. I mean, I've been in contests where, like, I go in there and we and everybody was talking around saying, wow, you're going to win this contest. And I was like, I don't know. You don't know. And, and, and you can, because a good example with that, we went there, we were the best quartet at that time in the contest. And then comes another quartet who, who I have actually really, really good, good friends with, uh, the bass singer of, uh, there was a quartet called Men in Black and the bass singer, Carl Hudson, who's a, 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 a Disney performer, Orlando here, here in Orlando in Florida. Uh, you know, we still, you know, have friends of to this day. And this quartet just comes out of the blue and wins the contest. So you really just, just you don't know. It's one of those things like it's not guaranteed, but you have to give it your all. And that's one of the biggest things that I would say advice wise. That's so many experiences. I think I have a lot of uh, knowledge to get from you so that we can give it to the people who are wanting to listen to this podcast. I wanted to know how does your songwriting process work? That's a good question. So for me, I tend to take the Max Martin effect. What that is, is it's the instrumental first and then the lyrics. So usually I'll hear kind of the instrumentation in my head, kind of getting back to Charlie Puth, which is kind of, here's like, it's like, it's like a symphony. It's like an orchestra just kind of going to my head saying like, okay, this is how I want this. I'll kind of write some chord, chord structures down and kind of get that structured and get that kind of going. And then I'll kind of play around with the melody with that particular chord structure. So like if, you know, if, if I'm, if I'm in, uh, say for the case, you C major, you know, you start with the root, you know, I'm kind of getting technical a little bit here. This is kind of a little music theory, if you will. So you start with kind of the root and then you go into like, maybe the, maybe you go to the, the three chords. So that's, that's E minor in this case. And you just kind of, you play, you play around with like shifting around, figuring out what is the best, uh, chord structures that will go through with that. And sometimes it takes a while. And this is just songwriting 101 in general. I mean, like if you're writing, you know, you know, if you're on guitar, I don't, I don't play guitar. I want to learn guitar, but like uh, me on my keyboard, if I'm doing a little bit of like, you know, it's kind of just playing around some block chords and say, okay, I go there and then I go there. Okay. That sounds pretty good. And then putting it all together. So like I said, it's kind of, it's that Max Martin effect, you know, it's, it's putting everything from instrumentation first. And then I add usually a melody. Sometimes the melody comes first. So like in my original song, I kind of had the melody first, but nine times out of 10, I usually get kind of a instrumentation, a, a, a scratch instrumentation down. So it's kind of like basically a, a work tape of that. And then for my original song, I sent that to my producer, Michael Walker, a Dream, Dream Walker Music Evolution. And, you know, just shot to him and said like, okay, this is what I got here. Let's tweak this around. And he, he gives me a very important question of like, are we co-writing this or is this just you writing it? For me, I like to have co-writers. You want to have different people, different opinions of how things are going. Nine times out of 10, I'm kind of in the driver's seat most of the time, but I like to have other suggestions. So like mm -hmm. the focus, when we got to the bridge of that song, Mike was like, well, how's this sound? So he plays some chord structures. I'm like, that works, I like that. So mm -hmm. as part of the co-write, like I didn't write the bridge of that song. He mm -hmm. just wrote that bridge. Mm -hmm. So it's important to get that co-writing uh, piece together and also yeah. lyrically. Lyrically, for me, I'm pretty strong. Like I can mm -hmm. think of a pretty good rhyme scheme for the most part, mm -hmm. but like Mike's wife, Caroline, specializes in song songwriting and lyrics and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, like I have avenues of people that I can contact for like, you know, okay, you know, like I got this lyric idea here. How does this sound? And, you know, uh, I'll, they'll, they'll probably say, well, that sounds pretty good. Well, I'm going to change maybe this word to a different word. And sometimes that's all, all it is, is usually one word. So mm -hmm. that songwriting process is usually bad. So, I mean, it's, it's usually like I'll start with instrumentation first, but nine times out of ten, it, you know, it, it tends to kind of work itself out in that regard. But sometimes I go there and it just depends. Yeah, so basically uh, you do instrumentation first, but sometimes you use the lyrics first. Yeah, yeah. It just depends on where I'm going with it. Like, for, like I said, for this original song, I went kind of lyrics first, the melody, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. kind of everything just kind of came together. 
Perfect. So do you have any rituals or specific environment that you feel very creative in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. R rit rituals. Yeah. So, so I don't really have a real ritual per se. Like for me, I like to get my voice warmed up as quickly as possible because the longer I tend to take to warm up the, the I guess the studio time I'm wasting per se. So I usually like to kind of go, oh, oh, I just kind of get the, the range, you know, warmed up. And for me, uh, it's, 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 it's kind of nerdy. Okay? I'm a big video game like kind of nerd so sometimes i'll go out kind of like exercise and i'll be humming like mega man or super mario tunes so anybody that you know knows the music with that's kind of it's, it just kind of warms the voice up all over the place and i have like you know i just I'm, I'm big with video game music too which i think is probably some of the best music ever composed so you know, I mean, yeah yeah people will probably argue with me on that but like if you're a video game nerd or whatever whatnot like me like i'm big on like you know like mega man music is, is was, was always one of my favorite uh like you know super mario like another one a uh, legend of zelda like the opening theme for zelda is brilliant i mean it's just you know and i would have that and i would just kind of like kind of hum that a little bit you know just kind of get mm -hmm. my my voice warmed up a little bit uh, mm -hmm. and that's kind of like how i kind of get myself going and then sometimes it's just take after take my voice naturally starts to warm up and for mm -hmm. me, water is 100% a necessity. I mean, like, I'll drink a little bit of pop. Like, I've, I actually, I'm guilty of it. Not doing a big mouth deep fiend, but uh, you know, for me, I always like to gravitate towards water just to keep, you know, whole holes hydrated. And stuff mm -hmm. like that. But mm -hmm. for me, it's just, you know, it's it's uh, this, some of the quirks that I have that work for me. So it's, it varies for different people. Do you also listen to anime, video game music? <laughs> Well, I was a big Dragon Ball Z fan back, like, way back in the day or whatever, whatnot. Uh -huh. anime, anime music, yeah, I mean, yeah, anime music and, and like, and Japanese music, actually, in, in general, like, with video game music, is, is actually one of one of my favorite genres, because it's just, you have, there's so much variety, like, these composers that they put, put this all together, and, like, it's so cool. And, and, and I'll tell you, I'm probably going to write a song, you know, that has kind of that Japanese, you know, com composition in mind. You know, I'll take that and uh -huh. I'll make it into a melody because, like, you know, like I said, like, like, all, all the all the Mega Man uh, uh, tracks or whatever. Like we're talking like the NES stuff there. It, it, it's just brilliant to my ears. I mean, I, it's just one of those things. Yeah, I'm just I'm just so into that. So. Well, uh, what well, themes do you find yourself drawn to in songwriting, and why is that? Oh, you mean like artists? What oh, topic of? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I would say probably the I would probably say the best songs that are written by real life experiences, and like a, a, I have like three songs that I'm writing right now are just based on real life experiences. So like with focus, it's about destiny. Uh, you know, going for the prize. You know, that that ultimate prize at the end. You know, uh, when I talked to my producer, you know, this was during the pandemic, and you know, we we're just like talking this kind of randomly. It's like you know, hey. Winston Churchill said it best, if you're going through hell, keep going. And that was the hook of my song. And I stuck to that, and that's the main hook of the song. So, you know, <laughs> going through hell, keep going. And, and, and it's, it's the big, big theme of that song. So that song is going to be called Focused, and that is, I'm aiming for that. Hopefully by the end of the year here, I've got a lot of, a lot of elements in that song. Uh, I, I just hired a, I, I went kind of all out here. <laughs> I just hired a choir uh, uh -huh. to do the final half of this thing, and I and and when I said to I when I said to, to Mike, I want this thing to rock right from the edge, no hold back. This thing is going to be in your face because I am so focused on, on this. Yeah. That's the message of the song, and you you'll hear it. You'll hear it in the, in, in the, the final product. It's epic. I mean, I want this thing just to be epic because you get one shot. To, to make to make a mark and i wanted to make a, a, a big a big mark as much as possible so you know like i said i got that going here i got them hired i i've got you know uh, just so many elements in this song that that i'm you know still putting in so like the embryo phase was getting the the, the work tape going for the drummer who's actually over in england and he's originally from south uh -huh. africa and and uh glenn wellman is his name and he's a fantastic drummer oh my gosh and he's another fiber guy 
that, you know, he laid out the drums to this with record time, and he was fantastic. I mean, he did an excellent job. And I, you know, like, like Mike was happy, I was happy. I was like, yes, oh yeah, this is gonna be awesome. He was, he was awesome what he did. Mm -hmm. but, um, I, I'm, I'm very excited to finally get this going here. It's just getting, getting the studio hours set and full speed ahead. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> yeah, choir sounds pretty impressive. I hope it comes out soon and we get to listen to it and focus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how do you use social media to engage with your fans and how has it impacted your music career? Yeah, social media is so important nowadays. It wasn't it wasn't back in the day, but I'll tell you right now it is very important. You know, using the, the right hashtags, you know, using, you know, you know, independent artists, you know, I use the singers who rock, the, you know, like singer, songwriter, all those hashtags are so important because you're reaching out to a whole pod full of people. I mean, we're talking millions of people out there on social media and you're, you know, you're just one person trying to reach out to a big media uh, of people out there. And it's, yeah, I, I, it's very important. So with social media, you know, using the right, the right hashtags, uh, thinking of content continuously, uh, be it original songs, be it cover songs, be it, you know, uh, you know, web, you know webs, website presentation. Like, you know, I, I, I'm guilty. I don't have my, my, my website set, but I do have the social media set. And that's at Sean Gavin Thomas Music for anybody that wants to, to follow. Uh, you know, I'm usually kind of posting kind of my, my daily activities and stuff like that. You see, like, you know, we've got, finally got a studio going here. Uh, you know, we got everything going here. I can, I can, I can show you here. We got, uh, you know, just kind of my awards on the white, on, on the uh, wall over there. Yeah, and yeah. A lot of Richie concerts, and uh, you know, it, it's a lot of, a lot of work that we put in here. We got Elvis here in the back, but yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of, lot of stuff. Uh, you know, this, this was a lot of work just to put together right here, and, and uh, you know, I, I think, think my, my handyman did all the, the painting and all that stuff, and everything is all, all set. So. When the time is right here, you know, I've got kind of my, my mic set up and everything, and I'm going to be doing some content where it's kind of, you know, kind of like the unplugged covers, where it's kind of like lay back on the couch, chill, and just it's, it's chill with Sean type thing. You know, it's, it's, it, I have so many ideas for, like, social media just to, just to get it out there, and uh, some of it takes time. I mean, you just got to, yeah. you got to ramp it up. I think, that's one of the, I think that's one of the biggest things is, you know, ramp it up yeah. and build it, and if you build it, they will come. <laughs> yeah, I'll come if you build it, that's for sure. Are there any contemporary artists that you are looking up to and would like to collaborate with in the future? Good question. Very good question. Um, collaboration is is, uh, is a very touchy subject. Um, collaboration, you got to find the right people to collaborate with because the person that you may, may want to collaborate with may not want to collaborate with you or they're not the right fit for what you're trying to do. So I think the biggest thing is collaboration. Like I, I'm in, actually in talks with a vocal coach that we, we just we kind of the natural conversation came real good friends, great singer herself. And I mentioned that I might feature her as a guest vocalist on an original song. And she was totally 100% on board. And uh, uh, she has her own content as a vocal coach and a musician. And she does gigs and stuff like that. And uh, you know that's a good a good fit because they're on board and you know that they're a great talent itself. And then there's some that like you know like, man, I wish I could sing with Charlie Puth or I could sing with Jason Mraz, but the chances of that happening are like one to million to none because obviously you know they're a whole it's a whole different thing on the mainstream level as opposed to being an artist. So the biggest thing it, it, it's it's a touchy subject, but if you find the right people that you like and you find that they're awesome and they like you and they like your talent, it's a win-win. And those are the people you want to work with. Amazing. And how do you take care of your voice? What are your pre-performance rituals? Okay, well, so, so like I said, so taking care, taking care of the voice is a very delicate instrument. So if you if you feel like crap, you're, you're vocally probably not going to sound real good either. So like water is a number one thing. You want to hydrate. You want to keep as much hydration as possible. Um, for me, since I'm doing these podcasts, it's a lot of talking. So sometimes I'll talk myself to death. And if I'm drinking something like this, like I'm Mountain doing you. it, it's going to deteriorate the voice. So I tend to go with water here. And actually, this is empty. I'm, I'm kind of taking the risk here uh, of doing it. But 
yeah, I mean, hydration is very important. Uh, proper vocal warm ups, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know like sirens, just keeping even the the high, you know, and, and finding you know where you know the, the vocal fry ranges. You know, uh, that's vocal fry, you know, where where you kind of crack or whatever. But uh, the more you do vocal warm ups and just kind of like just kind of light like crumbs, you know, it's keeping everything nice and loose. And don't force anything. You know, if, if it's just not coming out the way you want to, don't worry about it. I mean, it's 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 just not just gonna ha not gonna have it right now. Just keep vocally warming yourself up and just keeping it light and hydrate. I think that's and, and uh, some people have steamers, like the, the, where they have like steamers where they're you know they just breathe in the, the, the steam here. And that's one reason why I live in Florida. I used to live in Northeast Ohio, but now it's cold. It's like forty degrees and. Now with the winter months coming up, and I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. I needed something where, where I was able to be able to perform uh, comfortably and wake up too. Like I mean, I was like, I had no energy because of the cold. Like me and cold don't mix. I like warmth, <laughs> so, so that's one of the biggest things. Uh, like you know, uh, uh, I, I, uh, I think I might have seen. Are you in Minnesota? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Minnesota is Minnesota cold. No, that probably wouldn't really adapt over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cold. It's already started snowing yeah. here, so it's crazy. I, I'm getting cold just thinking of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, that's that's kind of the things that that, that I do just to keep myself. You know, that's cool. nice. Florida yeah. has good weather for sure. It's, mm -hmm. it's gonna get it's gonna get into the 40s and, and 30s from time to time, but it's very rare that it does that. But most of the time, it's usually in the 60s and 50s, which I can tolerate for the most part. But, you know, for me, like the humidity is one of the biggest things, like a lot of the vocals can definitely, can definitely say that, yes, with the humidity makes a huge difference in the performance. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So what's a piece of advice that you've re received and which has stuck through your career? Oh, okay. Biggest piece of advice. Well, the one thing is never give up because you're going to get more rejections than anything. I failed more times than you can count. And, and I just keep going. I mean, you're going to have one of those things where it's, you know, you're going to, you're going to have a failure. It's going to happen. Be it if, uh, an audition that didn't go as planned the way you want to, uh, if, uh, you know, like if you're playing an instrument and, and, uh, you know, if a, if, a, if, a, if a string breaks or, or, or if a technical issue happens with a microphone or, you know, this stuff happens. I mean, it's, it's not under your control. I mean, you're going to have feedback that'll happen on a technical standpoint. So that's, you know, that stuff happens. But I would say, you know, I would say, you know, no matter, never give up. Don't let anything distract you. Don't let anything get in the way of what you're trying to do. And, you know, Sing to the audience and sing to the person and connect. That's one of the biggest things for me. Uh, you know, make sure that, you know, believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself and not, ain't nothing going to happen, so, you know, and, and, and you got to you just keep pressing forward. I mean, that's one of the biggest things. And, and it's a good example of this new original song that I'm doing. It's just a good message of like, you know, you're going to go through the hell of things. And, you know, like I do Uber Eats on the side and, you know, I, I, I had a flat tire once, but I didn't let it deter me, you know, or anything like that. I just, I just you know, got it fixed and just kept going with it. So, you know, it's the never give up and be the hardest worker in the room. It's the Dwayne The Rock Johnson. It's just, just you, if you, you can follow stuff on Instagram or, or, or social media, just, just watch his stuff. He, he's, he's probably one of the most motivational people out there. I mean, he doesn't let anything phase him. He's just such a positive person. So, yeah, never give up and just and just be, be, be a hard worker. I have oh. another question. Doing music is not the easiest thing on the world, right? It's, it oh, comes with a lot of hardship, a lot of hardship. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The money is one thing. Mm -hmm. Like the money is pretty, sometimes you earn a lot in one season, but one season there's not much earning. So there's so yeah. much at stake here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, 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 I agree. No, it's it, with, with with music. It's 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 probably the only the only career that your income isn't guaranteed. You got to keep always pushing forward uh, with, with every with everything. Like for me, I run a vocal learning track business. I've been doing it for over twenty years, and I've had instances where it was 
red hot. Like in, in, in the summer, it was red hot. I was getting boom, 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 boom. And then come like the fall or whatever, or even a certain time, nothing. And that's, it's a scary thing, but that's where if you have multiple avenues, like with me doing, doing, doing Uber, that's a good supplement to keep it going for the time being and just keep moving forward. And you're, it, it will come. Just because they're not contacting you right now doesn't mean that they're not going to. Just keep in mind with that. It's all in timing. Like with what I do with my clientele, a lot of them are like seasonal. They'll say like, you know what, when, when we're ready with this, we'll be all, I have a regular client that feeds me all this stuff all the time. And they're just not ready at the current moment. But I know I'm going to get something from them because they've contacted me so many times and they like my work and they give me good praise with it. And like with music as well, you know, people get so so engrossed in the Spotify streams and the streaming and the and the monetary with that, don't even think that. This is a marketing tool. Get your music out there. People will hear it. And you might be able to get your music featured in many different ways. And then you'll be earning more money than you thought. <laughs> it was just it was just a simple simple stream or whatever or whatnot. I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's nice to get stream, streaming income and all that, but for me, I look at the bigger I look at the bigger picture because there's a, there's so much you can do with music and getting it out to a wider audience. And if you get more listeners, you're getting more money. Essentially, the streaming is coming that way as well. So it, it, it comes it comes naturally. Amazing! I love your answers. I think they're really something personal that you're sharing, and it's really cool. the upcoming music. What can your fans expect out of it? Specific theme or evolution in sound? Um. Not really a specific sound like this 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 first song is a rock song so it's gonna have that driving edge towards towards it so if you listen to like some metallic or, or, or even lincoln park for that matter it's not it's not it's not scream screamo metal or anything like that but you know it, this this song's got a little bit of an edge to, towards it and and it has my own characteristic with my own voice as well um you know it, it it's it's not really a, a, a new thing and and you talk about evolution, evolving the sound. Like, I think that's kind of a uh, a trend set. You know, like it's like a trending, uh, like a uh, 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 like a fad, if you will. Because mm -hmm. when you hear a certain song, like back in the '80s, the '80s had a very distinct sound. They used a lot of synth. They used a lot of kind of like the '80s drums you hear and all that. So, mm -hmm. like, you, you, you've heard journey, you know, journeys separate ways and don't stop believing. Them. Iconic songs, mm -hmm. but that particular sound that they aim that they aim for in the 80s and that's how the, the you know the it, like the uh on serious like sound the hair nation station you know like all you know, the, the hair bands and all that rock and everything you know, rock and but that's kind of like how that particular genre of music was and then like rapid hip-hop has its own distinct sound and then you have you know like the uh, young music the techno music you know like uh, uh Aqua's Barbie Girl, you know, if you go mm -hmm. back in the nineties, you know, they had kind of the techno type stuff, Technotronic, you know, back mm -hmm. in the nineties, and then it carries through. Now we got Kylie Minogue, you know, Padam Padam that we're hearing. That's yeah. kind of it's suddenly making a little bit of a a, a a a comeback, and you see with her music, it's you know, she uses those the, the filters to kind of make it sound a little bit metallic, kind of like that, kind of that uh, kind of real real uh, metallic type. Uh, delivery in her in her music so yeah and with with music's always evolving and like country is a very good example so like with what was i thinking that's a country song with you know you hear the banjos and stuff like that and you know back in 20 years ago when it came out in 2003 when i did the cover of that song what i wanted to do is i wanted to add a rock edge to it or i like to call them sgt flavor that's my initials but you know and add a little bit of a rock flavor to it so mm -hmm. like, I to my producer is like, you know, the middle section, I just want you to shred the hell out of this thing and, and just make it, make it your own. And he, and he did. And I was totally satisfied and it was, it was rocking. And that's my big single that I'm doing right now. And that's, oh, the, that's, that's really the cool. cover single. So yeah, stream. What was I thinking? Uh, by Sean, well, by Sean Gavin Thomas, well, covered by me and Dirk Spence did the original song, but. I had a little bit of a rock flavor to it. So, yeah, the evolution of music is always going to happen. It's just where we go with this. And I guess we're kind of going a little, not much faster. Like, I know that songs are getting shorter. And I personally can give or take with that. Because, like, One Republic's Runaway is only, like, about two minutes and 45 seconds. 
and like Charlie Puth's "That's Hilarious" on his, off his new album was like two minutes. I'm like, where's a bridge? I'm like, I'm gonna hear more. But I yeah. guess like, the attention span is like getting less and less. Lesser, so, yeah. I guess, I guess we got more people with ADD. From <laughs> mm-hmm. CTs, so I don't know. So, uh, what's on your playlist right now? And are there any emerging artists you're excited about? Oh, my playlist is very, it, it, it's, it's huge. <laughs> I've got, I've got everything. So like with, with acapella, I mean, acapella artists, uh, like, you know, pentatonics is one. Um, I mean, you've got, um, impact, um, the real group from, from Sweden. Um, mm. you know, this, the, those are some, some, uh, acapella groups that I have and, uh, voice play I actually know, uh, one of the performers, um, and actually, he's kind of doing guest performing, uh, Omar Jose Cardona. And if you don't know that name, you might be a little bit familiar because he was on NBC's The Voice and he finished fourth place oh. in, in that contest. So Omar is, I know Omar before he made The Voice and mm-hmm. he's about as tall as me. You know, I'm, I'm only five foot three and, uh, yeah, he's the little guy with a big voice and, uh, you know, it, it's amazing what, what he did with that show and, and, uh, you know, just amazing talent. But that's that's uh, on the acapella side, the rock side. You know, you got Metallica, you got Alice in Chains, you got uh, you know, like uh, uh, on the the grunge side, like Bush, uh, you know, Nirvana. You know, I'm kind of into that type of music there. Um, I would say on the pop side, you know, I'm big at boy bands, Instinct, Backstreet Boys, mm-hmm. uh, O Town, and like uh, Wonder, I guess One Direction and stuff like that. But so I'm pretty wide eclectic. Uh, uh, like yeah, that's. So I, yeah, I got, that's a lot of genres. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, is there any upcoming project or collaboration that your fans can look forward to? Well, I have a collaboration with another fellow artist that I did. This was during the pandemic, but uh, she's gone through a lot uh, personally. Uh, she recently just lost her mom, and uh, it, it was just a lot, a lot, lot of a lot of personal things that kind of got in the way with that. And I have. I have the recording all set there, and uh, we did a collaboration of uh, Jennifer Lopez's Let's Get Loud. So I did kind of the instrumentation, and we featured her her voice on it. And, uh, you know, she's a phenomenal singer, and she, she does, like, a lot of the, the, the theme park stuff in Orlando. It's like she's doing a lot of the Christmas things there. But, like, again, she's kind of getting herself re-caught up from what happened. And, you know, because, like I said, she recently lost her mom, lost her mom to cancer. Yeah. And, you know, it's a lot of a lot of stuff that she's just kind of getting her her head cleared again. And but she's an amazing talent. And I met her uh, about four, four almost almost five years ago. Um, and uh, just an amazing talent. Uh, her name is Melody Melody Joy. And and uh, you know you know Melody's amazing amazing talent. So that's one collaboration that I had. And as far as others. Not really. I mean, I, like I said, I, I'm talking with a vocal coach that I'm going to probably do a collaboration with that down the line once I get something, an, an original uh, thing written in, in stone. Like, again, the songwriting process is, it varies. Like I mentioned, you know, I could start instrument or I could start with a melody. So, you know, it's just all this stuff just takes time. So, really yeah. nice to hear that. What do you want to say to aspiring musicians? Could be of any age, they could be as young as 10 or even younger or could go up to the age of 50? Yeah, that's a good question. So like, um, I would say to never give up, you know, like, because just because you're this particular age right now, does it, does it mean that you can't do it? You know, I think, I think it proves nowadays, like anything's possible if you put your mind to it. Uh, you know, like for, for me, like I've got, you know, I've got a house borders that I'm paying down and I'm just focusing on paying that down as well. Like, you know, it, 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 because if you want to go, for me, I want to go bigger and better down the line. So, you know, I, you know, nothing is impossible if you put your mind to it. And I think that's a real key factor of, you know, staying focused, no pun intended, with your song. But that's <laughs> what it is. That's what this song is about. It's like, you know, no matter what happens, you're going to get rejected. You're going to get a no. You're going to get all the stuff here, but you just have to keep moving forward. And I think, you know, don't never quit. That's one of the biggest things. Because I've had many times I said to myself, ah, is this really worth it? You know, that's, those are big words. Is it really worth it? And I say, yeah, it is. Because you don't know what's ahead. You, you really don't know. And if, you'll never know if you don't do it. Yeah, you know, and if something it. makes you happy, why not do that? Keep on mm-hmm. doing it. 
Yeah. Right. Well, it's just like you with podcasting. You know, like if you enjoy it, who cares? I mean, you, you, it's what it's what you enjoy. You know, it's, you know, it's obvious. <laughs> Your answer is pretty good. Never give up because people reach to a point and then they are like exhausted that nothing is happening and they start giving up. They're like, oh no, now there's no point in doing this because I am of a certain age and now it's not that worth if I keep doing it. There's, there's always opportunities. There's yeah. Opportunities so, you never know when it opens. Yeah, and you never know when you're least expecting it. Maybe the opportunity is just coming to you. I really like that you said never give up. You never know what's on the other side. And yeah. you have to be persistent, keep on trying. And one day you'll definitely reach there. Just need to have faith in yourself. Yeah, yeah and that's one of the biggest things. Uh, I mean, what, uh, what people tell me is I'm very persistent. I'm very like, determined and persistent. Well, yeah, I'm very, I'm very persistent. Because you never know when an opportunity can open like that. And, and if you just kind of sit back and just let someone else take that, it's like, well, you know, you, you, you asked for it. I mean, it's, you know, that's, that's uh, some things you can't control, but you can certainly control going for it. So. Yeah, I agree with whatever you said. And it was so nice to talk to you. You had so many insights that... Like, maybe I couldn't have got it from somebody else. So I really enjoyed talking to you. And I'm glad you made it to this podcast. It was really nice having you, Sean, talking about your experiences. Thank you. And Thanks for having me. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this podcast. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please stay tuned for the next episode as well. We have this on all platforms. And I really want to thank Sean for coming to this podcast. It was great having him you should go and check out Sean's page on Instagram. He has one of his music released a few days back. So it would really be cool for you to go and check his page out. He has awesome content out there, which you guys will totally love. And uh, please give him a follow and like all his posts. Thank you so much.